Coming up, the Phillies find a foothold in the wild card race, and Shane Bieber dominated when the Guardians needed him to. This is Locked On Game to Game MLB. Every game, every team, every angle. Locked On Game to Game, your team every day. What's up, everybody? You are listening to Locked On Game to Game MLB. Local experts taking you from game to game for all of the updates on last night's Major League Baseball action, getting you completely up to date on everything you need to know. I'm your host, Daniela Bruce, and thank you for making Lockdown your first listen every weekday. The Dodgers got revenge from Monday's loss to the rival Giants by beating San Francisco at home on Tuesday. LA brought the power this time around as Lockdown Dodgers explained. The Southern California heat wave has caused a homer fest the first two games in this Dodgers-Giants series. This time, the Dodgers come out on top. Hey, what's up? It's Jeff from Locked On Dodgers. The Dodgers beat the Giants 6-3 on Tuesday night. Uh, The big blows, um, actually all nine runs in the game came on home runs. Uh, I think in Monday night's game, all but one run came on home runs. So it's just been the battle of the homers. And this time, the Dodgers got the big home runs. They had three homers, the Giants had two. And uh, the Dodgers had a three-run homer, a two-run homer, and a solo. The Giants just had the two-run homer and the solo homer, and that was the difference of the game. Joey Gallo hit a huge three-run homer uh, off of Harlan Garcia, broke his bat, and still managed to hit it 408 feet. Kind of ridiculous. Max Muncy had two homers on the game, one against Garcia and one later in the game. I mentioned Harlan Garcia just because this was his first time facing the Dodgers since uh, imitating their celebration and causing a stir for some reason calling out Mookie Betts uh, last time he faced the Dodgers. So the Dodgers greeted him with five earned runs in 1.2 innings, which is always, uh, yeah, w- welcome back, Harlan Garcia. Happy to see you. Um, yeah, so the Dodgers will go for the series win on Wednesday in a day game. But with this win on Tuesday night, they officially eliminated the Giants from the National League, National League West contention, and that's always a good day. So be sure to check out Locked on Dodgers first thing in the morning for everything you need to know about this game. Rising star Logan Gilbert dominated for the Seattle Mariners on Tuesday night, and Locked on Mariners tells us how his nine strikeouts in just six innings beat the White Sox. Led by their battery, the Mariners take game two of their series with the Chicago White Sox by a score of three to nothing. This is Sidney Gonzalez, host of the Locked On Mariners podcast here. And it was all about Logan Gilbert on Tuesday night at T-Mobile Park. Six scoreless innings for Goatee Gilby, who didn't necessarily have his best stuff tonight, but was able to bring the energy and then some in the biggest moments of this ball game, including the top of the six when Gilbert was faced with runners on first and third, just one out, but was able to come back with back-to-back strikeouts of Gavin Sheets and AJ Pollock with some big time fastballs, including a 99 mile per hour heater to Sheets. Gilbert wraps up the night with nine strikeouts and showed some emotion coming off of the mound in that top of the six. For what feels like the first time in his whole career, he was fired up. We were all fired up watching him come off the mound and be able to get that strikeout. Cal Raleigh was able to add some insurance in the bottom of the eighth with a two-run beef boy bomb, but it was tough sledding for the Mariners' offense. Johnny Cueto was filthy tonight. That changeup was downright freaky. But nevertheless, the Mariners get back in the win column with a 3-0 shutout, and they'll go for the series win tomorrow afternoon with Luis Castillo on the bump. We'll be on Locked On Mariners after the game. Be sure to join us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you then. The Philadelphia Phillies need to find a way to get their team a boost with Philly losing its hold on a wild card spot. And Locked On Philly hopes a walk off over the Marlins can be a spark plug for the Philadelphia playoff run. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Philadelphia Phillies walk it off in the ninth to win 3-2. to two. Connor Thomas, your host of Locked On Phillies. What a win by the Philadelphia Phillies tonight. They'd lost six of their last seven games. They needed a bounce back. And Aaron Nola, who'd been bad in September for years and struggling this year, well, he had a huge start for them. Gets them in great position. The bullpen comes through. Edmundo Sosa has a great game for the Philadelphia Phillies. And then a little bit of luck at the end with some bad defense from the Miami Marlins. And Bryce Harper ends up on second. Gene Segura ends up with the walk-off single, and the Phils have a little bit of magic back. If they can go on a run these next couple of games, well, they're looking good 
for the first playoffs since 2011. If you want to check out more, check out our episode tomorrow and all of our work over on Locked On Phillies. Coming up, the Red Sox struggles continues and the Cardinals close in on winning the NL Central. This is Locked On Game to Game. All right, everybody, let me introduce you to your new favorite flavor of a built bar, cookie dough chunk puff. All of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Like all built bars, new cookie dough chunk puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate and are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes delicious and it's good for you. Go to built.com right now and use our promo code offer locked on 15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's built.com with the promo code locked on 15 for 15% off. The Boston Red Sox started their series with a second straight loss to the Tampa Bay Rays. Boston continues to get reminders of why it's in last place in the AL East. Locked on Red Sox fills us in on Tuesday's matchup in Florida. The Red Sox struggles against the Rays continued on Tuesday night as they lost the second game of their series in Tampa Bay. Hey, it's Lauren from Locked On Red Sox. And the good news here is that Tristan Casas hit his first major league home run. And even though Rich Hill didn't pitch well, the bullpen just could not pitch well once again. The storyline of this game is that a White Sox fan from Orlando caught Tristan Casas' first major league home run. There was this big debacle about him not giving the ball back. The Rays sent their mascot out there. But in the end, this fan got exactly what he wanted, a bat, two signed baseballs, and Tristan Casas got the ball back. So even though the Red Sox lost, there was a bit of a feel-good story during the game. Jake is going to break everything down for you on our next episode of Locked on Red Sox. The Chicago Cubs put a rookie in relief for his major league debut and he threw five shutout innings to finish a win against the Reds. Locked on Cubs likes what he saw from Hayden Wisniewski. Just an absolutely perfect day at Wrigley Field. Perfect night, I should say. Cubs beat the Reds 9-3. to Pitching prospect Hayden Wisniewski, the guy the Cubs got in the Scott Efros trade just about a month ago, came in and threw five shutout innings, striking out eight, getting his first major league win in his major league debut, featured a great slider, awesome stuff. Seiya Suzuki hit a big home run. Morell and Madrigal had big hits. It was just the exact type of game you want when you are not contending in September and you are looking ahead to 2023. Uh, guys that are going to be on the 2023 roster contributing, making it fun. Uh, this was just overall a really fun night to be a Cubs fan. Hopefully they could uh, continue their stretch the rest of this homestand. They got Cincinnati for two more and then the Giants. But uh, enjoy tonight. What a job by Wisniewski. The Cardinals' latest hot streak has the NL Central all but wrapped up for St. Louis. And on Tuesday, it was some new faces leading the way to a win. Lockdown Cardinals goes over the names that you need to know. Tuesday night, the Cardinals needed a spark to help them break out of their two-game hitting funk, and it was a pair of rookies that answered the bell. It's J.D. from Locked on Cardinals, and after scoring just two runs in their previous two games, the NL Central Division leading Cardinals leaned on rookies Brendan Donovan and Nolan Gorman for their offense to help put some bang back into their lineup. After falling behind 1-0 early, it was Donovan who got the birds on the board when he smoked a solo shot into the right center field seats, his third of the year. Then later in the same inning, Gorman hits a double off the wall that plates another. Then in the bottom of the seventh, the young slugger tattoos one over the wall in right center instead, his 14th of the year, to make it 4-1. to one. And that's how it ended. No home run for Albert Pujols tonight as he continues to sit at 695 career home runs, just one back of Alex Rodriguez for fourth all-time. But all year long, it's been a steady mix of veterans and rookies stepping up when they needed to. And tonight, it was the freshman leading the charge as the Cardinals moved to 80-56 and 56 on the year. For more in-depth Cardinals content, be sure to join us tomorrow for a fresh new episode of Locked on Cardinals. The Baltimore Orioles desperately need wins to keep hope alive for the playoffs. And they got a big win over another team contending for a spot in the Blue Jays last night. Locked on Orioles recaps a crucial victory for Baltimore. It was a game the Orioles absolutely positively had to have, and they got it. 
over the Blue Jays on Tuesday night. Connor Newcomb here, host of Locked on Orioles. Orioles 9, Blue Jays 6, your final score in Game 3 of a four-game set. O's pull back to within three and a half games of Toronto. And things looked ugly early in this one. Went down 3-0 early. Kyle Bradish couldn't get out of the fourth inning. But Brandon Hyde managed this game simply like it was a playoff game. And you know what? I respect him for it. Because if the Orioles lose this game, their playoff hopes are almost dead and buried. Instead, he goes to Dylan Tate, his second best reliever, in the fourth inning. And somehow the Orioles piece together enough outs to get through the game. The offense finally wakes up. And the Orioles win it to stay right in the wild card race. I'll recap it all coming up on Wednesday's episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. Shane Bieber dominated on the mound for the Cleveland Guardians on Tuesday, and his eight innings caught the attention of both of our Locked On Guardians and Royals hosts. The Cleveland Guardians win tonight. If you missed it, Shane Bieber is definitely the story of this game. Eight innings, four hits, seven strikeouts, one walk, just one earned run. Chris Bubik pitched pretty well on the other side, but Shane Bieber was otherworldly. And Cleveland continues the hit parade. Double-digit hits for the second game in a row. Uh, Twins and Yankees were postponed, so Cleveland currently sits with a a one-and-a-half game lead in the American League Central. Always nice to build up that lead. And you got to take care of business when you're facing a team like Kansas City. Yes, this is a team that has played better in the second half and they've promoted young players. They're still sitting there at 55-82. and The Guardians are 70-64. and You have to beat teams like the Royals if you want to make the postseason. If you want a more in-depth take as we get into the win from tonight, make sure to check out tomorrow's Lockdown Guardians, where we'll be getting into this game. And we're also going to get into an equally dominant performance in the minor leagues from one of the best young pitchers that not enough people are talking about. The Kansas City Royals fall 4-1 to one against the Cleveland Guardians and Shane Bieber. I'm Rylan Stiles, host of Lockdown Royals, and this young Royals lineup really struggled against Shane Bieber and this Guardians team. The only run was off of a home run by Salvador Perez. The rest of the young group just could not get it done at the plate. But this is all a part of growing pains and a part of having a very young roster. What can these young guys take away from this game? Find out on today's Lockdown Royals podcast. And that's all for today for Locked On Game to Game MLB. Thank you again for making Locked On Game to Game your first listen every weekday. Subscribe to Locked On MLB on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. And make sure your second listen is your team's Locked On podcast. I'm Daniela Bruce, and this has been Locked On Game to Game.